On today's show, more Stables Players productions are coming. One of our athletes in Sports Illustrated. Lots of important announcements. All this and so much more. Good, Good morning, morning, Staples. Staples. Good morning, Staples. It's Thursday, February 26th. I'm Gavin Berger, and this is our first show since winter break. And I'm Gus McGee. We have a good show for you today, which will begin as soon as we all stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To begin our show today, we have Matt with the weather for the rest of the week. Good morning, Staples. I'm Matthew Elliott with the weather. Today it's going to be 40 and cloudy. Tomorrow, it'll drop down to 37 and be pretty windy. It'll stay around 40 on Saturday and go to up to 51 on Sunday. So enjoy it while it lasts. Now back to the hosts. Thanks, Matt, and let's hope the weather clears up for our weekend. To start our show, we have Mimi with an important information about next week's SAT and CAPS test. Good morning, Staples. On Wednesday, March 2nd, all juniors will be taking the SAT test. And on Thursday, March 3rd, all sophomores will be taking the CAP test in science. Special schedule will be posted outside the main office, at the front desk, and in the cafeteria. If you can't find it, it's also on the SHS website. Lists of where 11th and 10th graders should be taking their tests are in the same locations. CAP Science Review Sessions will take place on Tuesday, March 1st, and Wednesday, March 2nd. On Wednesday, March 2nd, only juniors will be in the building until 12 o'clock. Second bus loop will run for 9th, 10th, and 12th graders. Juniors, remember to bring a calculator, photo ID, and two number two pencils. Only sophomores will be in the building until 10 o'clock. Again, a second bus loop will run for all other grades. Juniors, sophomores, don't be nervous. You're going to do great. Just come prepared and come with a smile. Thanks, Mimi. So 10th and 11th graders, be sure to check lists outside the main office, guidance, and cafeteria for your test locations and schedule. Next, we have some important information for you about an upcoming essay contest. Check this out. Good morning, Staples. Currently, there's an essay contest going on by Westport's team organization. The essay contest is about racial diversity in our town and around Fairfield County. It's made due to the recent events that have been happening across the country and how they have touched our area in general as well as the rest of the nation. The prize is $1,000 for first place, $750 for second place, and $500 for third place. Deadlines for the essays are on February 26th. So all of you writers, fire up your word processors and submit your pieces before the contest deadline. Up next is some information about the upcoming Staples Players Studio production of Done to Death. Hey Staples, I got a chance to talk to Noah Pines, the director of Done to Death, that's playing this weekend at Tokay Hall. Let's take a look. Hello, my name is Noah Pines and I am the director of Done to Death by Fred Carmichael. Uh, Done to Death is a murder mystery comedy about a group of murder mystery authors who get together to uh, collaborate on what will become the greatest mystery TV show of all time. Unfortunately, things don't go as planned. Oh my god! Prime Minister Summers wants the meaning of this. Didn't your agents tell you there would be an audience? Certainly not. Or I would avoid that time. Perhaps it's an oversight on my part, but I did. There's no harm done, is there? This is an experiment. Or a game, really. Murder is hardly a game, dear. We've all made a career out of it. Please sit down and let me explain. I don't like audiences. People might be nervous. I think we should all go home. No, I'm fascinated. Let's be a girl. They look like nice people, but there are so many of them. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen, but authors are temperamental too, same as actors and everyone else involved in the creative life. It's a great show. Everyone's working really hard. Come see it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, February 26th, 27th, and 28th at Tokay Hall. 
Thanks, Noah, for the interview. I hope you all go see Done to Death this weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Looks like it's going to be a great show. Now let's throw it back to me and Gus. We have some great shows coming up this spring. Be sure to put Done to Death on your must-see list. We will have more about Drowsy Chaperone in our next show. Up next, Johnny has some important information from Guidance. Hey, kids. Miss Capozzi here from Guidance. So, listen up. This is for all of you in the building, except for you seniors. So this is for current grades 9, 10, and 11. It's time to pick your courses and come in and meet with your guidance counselors. So what we do special here at Staples High School is we offer you an opportunity to meet with us individually to discuss your courses for next year. For you juniors who did not make it to see us the week before break, you have an opportunity to see us this week so how do you know what courses you were recommended for? You log into your home access and you hit the schedule tab and you scroll down and you assure that you have course recommendations. Then what you do is you download the course catalog or at least look at the course catalog online and make a plan for yourself. But most importantly, get to guidance, make an appointment, come see us, be prepared, Sophomore class, you guys are slated to come in February 29th, March 1st, 3rd, 4th, or 7th. And for current freshmen, the week of March 14th to the 18th. Want more information about this? Ask your parents to pull up the email that was sent out to them about how this all works. Hope you're well. Take care. Thanks, Johnny, for getting us that important information. And now it is time for sports. Up first in sports is Matt and Sam with some thoughts about the recent Super Bowl. Hey, Staples. The Super Bowl was just a couple days ago, and the commercials are a big part of the game. So we're going to go around and ask some Super Bowl commercial is the Hotline Bling commercial with Drake. Good, good, pull out, good. Perfect. Here are the changes. I love changes. When you say call me on my cell phone, just add device eligible for upgrade after 24 months. Genius. Uh, my favorite Super Bowl commercial is the T-Mobile Steve Harvey. T-Mobile? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen, folks. I have to apologize again. Look, those were last year's numbers. It says right here on the card, T-Mobile doubled their LTE coverage in the last year. And with more LTE towers than Verizon, T-Mobile reaches pretty much everyone they do. I'm not taking responsibility on this one. Uh-uh, Verizon got it wrong. Yes, not me. My favorite Super Bowl commercial was the Heinz commercial with the so Wiener Dogs. It's hard to resist great taste. Meet the ketchups. There you have it, Staples. Those are all the commercials that the students liked the Super Bowl Sunday. Now back to the host. Thanks, Matt and Sam, for that piece. Up next, we turn to the boys lacrosse team. Hey, Staples. Today we are going to interview lacrosse captain Ross Goldberg to see what the inside look of the lacrosse season is this year. So, Ross, what do you think the team's going to look like this year? Uh, well, this year we got a lot of guys coming back, a lot of uh, seniors and juniors with varsity experience, so I think that's going to really help us out this season. Uh, we got knocked out of the state playoffs a little earlier than we had hoped last year, so we're looking for a good rebound year this year. So what players that were seniors last year are we going to lose this year, and who do you think is going to replace them? Uh, well, last year we had uh, Isaac Barrow and Lucas Jackson on defense, who were two great players for us. Unfortunately, they graduated. So uh, we have a bunch of guys who played a little bit last year, like uh, Drew O'Brien and Billy Hutchinson, who are going to step up and take over their spots. Okay, so you guys have a new defensive coach, so what kind of things is he doing to help out the team? Uh, well, Coach Sip has been really great so far in the offseason. You know, we got to know him pretty well. He's starting to get a good bond with all the players. He brings a lot of intensity to the practices and uh, all our lifting sessions. So I think it's going to be a really great year with him heading up the defense. Okay, Ross, who were some tough teams that you guys played last year? 
Uh, well, last year, you know, we played Ridgefield and Greenwich both really tough. Uh, two double overtime losses that were, you know, tough for us. If we can break through, win a couple of those games this year, then I think that'll be really big for us in the FCAC playoffs. Thanks, Ross, for the information on the upcoming lacrosse season. Now back to the host. Thanks, Matt. Looks like the team is in great shape for a great season. Up next, Reese and Jack have a wrap-up on the boys' basketball season and of the state tournament. Took a shot at Henny, I've been going crazy, crazy. They say my whole hood got it under stick investigation. Talk. They know they talk that stick talk, that stick talk. They know we talk that lick talk, that lick talk. Good morning, Staples. We are here with our state's edition of Chalk Talk with Reese and Dylan. We're going to talk some basketball, how the varsity season went so far, and how it's looking going to the state tournament. So Dylan, do you think the uh, team reached its goal this year? You're going to be in states. Yeah. Well, at the beginning of every season, you know, our goal is to make states, and uh, we faced a lot of adversity this season. We lost Ben Casparius early on, and uh, Jared Vishno, the uh, other co-captain, went down a few weeks ago. So, um, you know, given all the adversity, you know, I think it's been I think it's been a successful year. Biggest win this season? Where do you think it came? Uh, definitely Wilton uh, last week. Um, we have a bit of a rivalry with Wilton. Uh, they beat us early on this season, and uh, we really wanted to get that one, so uh, it was a good win. So what teams do you think you'll have the uh, biggest challenges against during the state tournament, and what do you think has uh, primed you guys to get to you know, thus far, and what are going to be your keys in the state tournament? Um, you know, with states, you're gonna see, we're going to see a lot of teams that we haven't faced in the regular season. Um, so teams like Hill House, Fairfield Prep, um, you know, we have a good chance of facing one of them. Um, and as for keys, um, you know, we're, we're a very good shooting team, and I think if we get in a roll from the three-point line, we can give one of those teams a lot of troubles. Um, we're tough to guard, and uh, I'm excited, uh, I'm excited for, uh, for Stace. Look for Coach Devine to be spreading the floor during Stace this year. You can't understand us, cause you're too soft. Tell them bad bands, run them straight through the machinery. Thanks to Reese and Jack for that piece. It's not often that high school athletes make it to Sports Illustrated, but one of our athletes recently did. Up next is Eli's piece on Hannah DeBalzi. This is Hannah DeBalzi. She's making real wishes of pogo sticking. Hello. Well, when I was growing up, I wasn't really a runner. Like, I did other sports, but I never really ran, like, seriously. Like, I took the gym mile pretty seriously, so I wanted to beat my brother. But besides that, I didn't really run until freshman year. So Westport, people would be like, oh, I saw the video. It was really cool. Um, and, like, maybe I'll recognize him. I've never talked to him before. Maybe just, like, because I'm random, like, a parent and meet. We'll say something. She did a great job of really focusing that this is something that I love, and I'm going to fight for it. I'm gonna fight like I fought for my fastest times, and I'm gonna continue fighting to get back where I was and even better. And that was a powerful moment because you have to decide if this is really the sport for you. Maybe like when I have like my own kids, I'll be like, oh, it's TVT. But um, yeah, I don't know. It just makes me feel weird. <laughs> like I, I appreciate it and everything, My coaches don't put pressure on me at all. Like I think the, the pressure I get is like pressure I put myself, which is good because if they weren't like that, I honestly don't think I could be this dedicated to running because you just have to enjoy the sport to succeed in it. It's her wanting to be the best at school. It's her wanting to get faster, more intelligent. It's just in her blood. And I'll really enjoy seeing what she does at Stanford. I think each accomplishment has come as a surprise because she's not doing it for the accomplishment. She's just, you know, like for a skunk. You know, she's just running. <laughs> Thanks, Eli, for that insightful piece. Well, that's our show, Staples. Because of testing next week, we will not be running any TV shows for you. So we will not see you until March 9th when the Period 8 TV production class will bring you their next show. Have a great weekend. Sophomores and juniors, good luck with your SAT and CAP tests. We'll see you in two weeks. Goodbye. Goodbye.